uh, a brain that was donated to us here at the uh, Medical School of the University of Oxford to help us teach our medical students. And um, it's quite awesome and, and more than just a little sad to think that in this organ, more than perhaps anywhere else, a person once lived. In fact, you could put it more strongly than this, you could say a person was once alive because this brain was once able to do what brains do. Um, perhaps we should just, you know, spend a moment to imagine what a day in the life of this brain would have been like. You know, the brain would have, you know, one morning uh, found itself in bed uh, and the thalamus, which is just underneath here, would have broken out of the brain's sleep rhythm. Um, the person would have woken up, he would have opened his eyes. Uh, as he was opening his eyes, uh, really lots of nerve impulses would have flooded in through the optic nerves here, uh, would have travelled towards the back of the brain where um, the um, uh, nerve cells living here on the, in the occipital cortex would have formed images on the retina. Uh, these um, retinal images would have then been transport, you know, would have then been sent down here into the temporal lobes. Uh, here you have the infratemporal lobes which have cells that recognise faces. They would have recognised the person's wife sleeping next to him. <coughs> His um, broker's area over here would have formulated and articulated the greeting to the wife, good morning darling. Um, his temporal lobes here would have listened out for a reply. The wife would have said, go and make some coffee. Um, you know, the, the motor cortices which sit here together with the basal ganglia underneath would have started off this motor program. The man would have got up and walked down the stairs to the kitchen in a well-rehearsed motor pattern which runs really on autopilot because the cerebellum here at the back would have rehearsed these um, actions so many times that he, you know, he doesn't even have to think about them anymore. The, 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 the autopilot basically runs out of the cerebellum. He goes into the kitchen, he puts the kettle on, he brews the coffee, the olfactory bulbs here which are connected to the, you know, which basically bring information in from the nose, would have smelled the coffee. The orbital frontal cortex here would have thought about how, to, you know, whether or not he found breakfast delicious. And during all this time, his prefrontal cortex, these areas here, would have worried about getting the children off on time uh, to the school run. So, you know, each of these parts of the brain sort of contributed something, you know, contributed their own thing to the, to the person's experience and to his, uh, his um, uh, morning. But, um, you know, while each of them has their own role to play, they work together in such, such an intricately uh, interconnected manner that, um, you know, that if you live inside one of those brains, you have this impression of being just a single person rather than a collection of organs that is distributed across this, um, this uh, brain.